So I can see you. Like, can you turn on your camera or what? Oh, do I need to change my background? Wow, maybe I should. I'll be honest, I didn't change my background as much as had a child overtake my computer. How do I change my background? How do I change my background? Huh. You have to sign into Zoom and start that. Oh. Don't worry about that. Your background of white, if anything, is symbolic for the beginning of our trek. Okay. Well, here we go. Well, it's my... Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, you ready? So, yes, I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's get started. I got a, a text in front of me, and we're going to be look, uh, reading and trying to analyze to the best of our innocent abilities the gospel according to St. Matthew. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Okay. You say amen wonderfully. I, I think there's been a real evolution in the way you say amen. You say it like a good Jew. Okay. Well, you know, I've learned I've I've learned to appreciate how much of how much of or how um, learning about Judaism has enriched my faith, has enriched my understanding of the scriptures. And when we started this conversation, when you said antinomianism, this was a completely new term to me earlier this year. I'm like, what is this guy talking about? It took me a while to understand like what is antinomianism. Now I realize, oh my gosh, my faith is so steep in antinomianism, and the gospel of Matthew is completely different. It's very, very different. For all you know, I was just making up random words of long syllables and anti something and you're just jumping on and you know what now the, my, my favorite word of all is antinomianism believe it or not <laughs> middle of the night, I wake up the, oh, antinomianism and that's probably the first time that sentence has ever been said my favorite word is antinomianism <laughs> and matthew the gospel of matthew is the exact opposite and, and i can see how this is you know this is so in line with, with the old testament or, or, or it fits well with the old testament with the and and uh, it's 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 enriched you my think faith. more than the more than the gospel according to mark i would say so yes wow look yes. at this so matthew so, uh, is our favorite jewish apostle <laughs> yeah, and I think it's the reason because it's a, it's not just the social side of Jesus, but also it has a deep Christology. But it's not it's not on the side of John, where John is so high to the divine, and this word became flesh. And it's, well, well you're, you're getting so ahead of us. I feel yeah, like anyway, so. But thank you. I'm excited. And so Matthew, yes, it's my favorite gospel, and it's favorite it's, gospel. Oh my God, I'm going to say it's my favorite gospel as well. Then yeah, so it's both ours. So here's how I vote that we go forward. You read the verse, and then we'll do our best to analyze the verse to the best of our abilities. That's not a problem at all. So uh, where do we start? 1-1. One, one. The gospel according to St. Matthew. The gospel, the gospel according to St. Matthew. Well, that, that's, Matthew. Actually, that's before 1-1, one, one, but I'll, I'll let this one slide. Okay. <laughs> The genealogy of Jesus Christ, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Okay, so um, I guess the first thing that we could point out is that no one believes that Jesus Christ is the son of David or the son of Abraham. So how, how do we understand that? Who is Jesus the son of? You Joseph. Joseph or God, those are generally the two options, right? So even before we go there, like why did the, like why did the why did Matthew pick out David and Abraham? Like why just these two of all the other of why didn't he of all the other four, of all the people who've gone before them? Is there a reason that he picked out only these two? Well, I, I would so as a good Jew, I would say those are the two that I would have probably picked out. But let me throw the question back at you: If it not picking out these are the two most famous guys, who would you pick out? You know, for what it's worth, right, David, he was, yes, he became king. He cheated on his friend, cheated on his subordinate, slept with his, slept with his, his subordinate's wife. A lot had, of accusations here. Lots of no, 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 I'm intrigued. So, so <laughs> I mean, because you said that, that, that you would pick him, I'm intrigued as to why you, why you would pick him. Like, you're well, like, I'm just speaking, you know, colloquially saying that Abraham and David generally are the two foundations of one is viewed as the father of the Hebrews of the the Jewish people, and the other one is the most important monarch. Wouldn't we want to fix? Wouldn't we want to pick Moses and Solomon? Because Moses is one again. Moses is remarkable. He he gave us the first five books, and Solomon built the temple. 
And again, and Jewish life revolves around the temple. Like you can't be a Jew without having a temple. Are you? I mean, and so and Solomon built the temple. So why not pick? Why not pick Solomon and Moses? So, so again, like my answer would be, those two guys are viewed as the fathers of different uh, ideologies and of different importance. And while Moses is a lawgiver, and putting aside antinomianistic uh, perspectives of different gospels. Uh, generally, I think that to say that he's from the line of Moses, we never speak about anyone from the line of Moses for the most part, right? Yeah. Who's Moses' great great grandson? No one, I don't know. And uh, I guess once you say you're from the line of David, you're not necessarily from the line of Solomon, but I think we assume in this case that Jesus is supposed to be from the line of David through Solomon, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess we, we do, we do uh, get that one. So, okay, so. Uh, so why, why start, first of all, um, is Jesus the son of God? Is Jesus the son of Joseph? I don't care. Why am I starting out with genealogies that aren't so good? What's the benefit of starting with uh, genealogies? And let's be honest, I, I'll skip ahead from 1-2 to 1-11 uh, and say these, this is not even the end. This is an introduction to the introduction mm -hmm. to the introduction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so on the topic of genealogy, Jacob, like you can't, I mean, and I've learned to appreciate who Jacob was, the amount of suffering. He, like, again, Abraham was the first person, but the Jewish faith came from, from Jacob. And that's when you split into a nation. And off, off the two big, off the two promises to Abraham, land and land and son, right? Land and, uh, and, and, and descendants. Um, Jacob was a huge part of that as in from growing from, from a, a household to, to a nation, right? Now, I would want to say that if you know, if you know, if if you know, if this gospel is written for a Jewish audience, that we'd want to again, wouldn't wouldn't you want to say Matt, again, David, fine, and Jacob and Abraham? I don't know who the audience is. Look at you. You're you're the one who's trying to proselytize everyone so quickly. <laughs> written for the, it's written for the Jews. Let's go Jews. Yeah, so again, play the devil's advocate. I mean, you know, intrigued because all these folks, right? I mean, the, there are people who have lived remarkable lives, right? And as he said, each one is unique in their own ways. And yes, you know, this community does matter, right? And then it starts with Abraham. So I can see why Abraham is here. The promise to him was land and children. And in that context, Jacob, this guy is just remarkable. I mean, his life, the amount of suffering he went. And it's, it's almost fair to say that Christianity or Judaism wouldn't be here without, without Jacob. Well, I think that's definitely true for all these people on the list. I think that we get asked the textual, textual question. Was it that this first verse was here and then later on verses uh, 2 through 11 were added to explain our question? I was so saddened by the ambiguity and unclarity of the situation, they go, oh my God, Christians won't even know where they're going. We need this line in there. So that's, a, 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 it seems to be a possibility as well. Amen. Amen, okay, well on that, on that note, I think we'll stop with one one. Uh, I think we did a great start for today. And uh, till next time.